Hi guys, it's April, and I promise I won't do this whole wrap up with this hood on my head. But it's Halloween, so I kind of had to. It is time for my October wrap up, and I have seven more books to talk to you about. So far this month, I've read 25 different things. Like I said, this is only going to be seven of those because I have a couple of other wrap ups already up. I'll link them up above and down below. In case you want to see what else I read, there was Fall Into Manga Love, and there was also Get Graphic With It. So those had a huge chunk of my reading for this month, but these are all the things that I ended up reading outside of those readathons. And with all of those things that I have managed to read this month, my yearly total is now at 153 books. I am way past my reading goal. I don't think I'm gonna reach my stretch goal by the end of the year, but I might, you never know things happen. All in all, the total pages read this month comes to 6,682 pages read, and the yearly total is now at 45,640 pages read. My average has gone down slightly. I think part of it is because of everything that happened the month before, moving, and all of that jazz. So I'm only at about 150 pages a day, but I'm still averaging about two days per book. But those are all numbers. What did I think of what I read? The first book I want to talk about is All the Ever Afters by Danielle Teller. This was a book club book pick for me for my local book club. This is a retelling of Cinderella but told from the stepmother's perspective. It gives you a lot of backstory of where she came from, how she ended up as Cinderella's stepmother, and all of Ella's years of growing up. It was an interesting perspective on seeing where the stepmother came from, but I found myself not really caring a lot of the time. It didn't add Add a lot of nuance. It gave the stepmother a little bit more to stand on, but at the same time, I struggled to find the point of the read. Sometimes there isn't a point, I suppose. It's just about getting the mystery out there, but I wanted there to be a reason we were trying to get everything cohesively together, and there just, yeah, there wasn't. Next is The Four Loves by C.S. Lewis. In this one, C.S. Lewis breaks love into four different categories, and that is affection, friendship, eros, and charity. It talks about love from each of those perspectives and what does it look like. It was interesting to see how C.S. Lewis viewed everything going on in his day and age and how some of that is still really relevant today. There were a couple parts where I was a little, oh, stop me. But overall, it was an interesting read just to see how humans take love and we break it down into all of these different parts. Next is a super exciting book called Crossing the Chasm by Jeffrey A. Moore. This is a marketing book that takes a look at how to take a brand new project and at some point in its life journey, there's a point where you have to get from the early adopters to the mainstream. And it talks about all the things that it takes to ramp up and kind of jump over that chasm to actually make it into a solid product that people are constantly buying or constantly talking about and all of that. There were parts that I found fairly interesting, but at the same time I felt like the book dragged on a little bit more than it could have. I will also note that there are so many different editions of this book where it updates the examples, so if you end up reading a book that's older, some of the examples are no longer relevant because the company that he's talking about just it, it doesn't exist in the same way that it does now. Then there was The 10,000 Doors of January by Alex E. Harrow. This was a book of the month book for me. I am actually really glad that I ended up picking this up. This story was broken down in such a way that I was just dying to pick up more. It's a little slow at the beginning because you have to switch your brain into how the writing is set up. It feels very much like a classic and how a classic is normally told. But this follows the story of January as she's slowly learning about her past. She finds this book that tells the story about magical doors that lead to other places. She is the ward of a wealthy man who likes to collect rare objects, and this wealthy man has been sending her father off to collect these objects when tragedy one day strikes and her father doesn't come home. Several things start to happen in January is starting to dig into who her father really was, who her mother really was, and who her guardian actually may or may not be. There are a lot of things that go on, and as I was reading this, I was getting vibes of Virginia Woolf, and this long journey of discovery was just something that I really enjoyed. And so since it was October, for Shay and my book club, Tell It Again, 
we decided to read The Dark Descent of Elizabeth Frankenstein by Kirsten White. We haven't done our live show yet, but that is coming up. But this is a retelling of the Frankenstein story by Mary Shelley. I did enjoy the original Frankenstein. So when I found out that this was a thing that White did, I had to read it. And I like the fact that she switched it into Elizabeth's perspective. Now Elizabeth is a orphan that the Frankensteins took in to give companionship to Victor. She later becomes his wife. Now this story, of course, is told from Elizabeth's perspective, but White also takes the Frankenstein story and switches it quite a bit, suggesting that maybe the story that we have been told is actually not quite how it went down. I did like to see how White changed the characters a bit. Also like to see how White may have thrown Mary Shelley into the story herself. There was just a lot of odes to the original Frank sign that I, I really enjoyed the way that White did this. I also finally completed The Child Thief by Brahm. This is a book I've had on my shelf for an age and a half and I've always struggled to read it because it is such a dark, book. It takes the Peter Pan story, which is dark in and of itself, but it makes it darker. It takes a lot of real human tragedy, especially from a child's perspective, and it kind of morphs and shifts it into the Peter Pan story and what the Neverland may or may not be. Brahm takes a lot of other mythos and fairy tales and just dark lore and kind of mushes it all together. You get Faye, you get Seely, you get the horned one, and it's just this very dark journey. I like seeing how innocent but dark Peter is and how some of this shapes him into realizing some of the things that he may be doing to these children and what that actually means. And maybe he's coming to reckoning to it, but maybe he's not. There's this whole, yeah, Peter Pan never grows up. So it's hard to step forward, especially when he, he just, there's, there's things. I did enjoy it. It's just, I, the warning out there, it is a hard book to get into. It deals with a lot of rape and abuse and neglect and a lot of that kind of things that can affect children. And last but not least, White Sand Volume 3 by Brandon Sanderson. This is a graphic novel story that follows a world where people can do things through the energy of sand. In volume three, you start to get a little bit more political than say volume one and two were. I'm starting to realize that with Brandon Sanderson's very heavy dialogue storytelling, sometimes it is hard to get into his graphic novel versions of it. I far more enjoy his novelizations rather than the graphic novels. Graphic novels do very well when there's a lot of action sequences, at least for me, but since this volume was so political and dealing with all of that kind of stuff, there was a lot of dialogue and sometimes that's a little heavy when it's all illustrated like this and sometimes you just you have to go over it a couple times because you don't necessarily read it in the right way and part of that is because I just got off of reading manga which you, you read the opposite direction and you I had to switch my brain back, but I am interested in the story. I just don't necessarily favor the graphic novel storytelling aspect of it. So that is the rest of the things that I have read for October. That means November is now going to begin. And after November, we have December and then it's the end of the year. Where has this year gone? It's, I, I don't know. Tell me down below what you were for Halloween if you decided to dress up, if not, Tell me what you would want to be if you did, and I heart your beautiful faces. Bye.